representative of Indonesia, I shall now make a statement in my capacity as the representative of the Russian Federation. We thank the special envoy of the Secretary General Martin Griffiths, and uh, we were able to Under Secretary General Mark Lockock for their detailed uh, overview of the military, political, and humanitarian situation in the Republic of Yemen. They show now, as they did before, that Yemen and the people of Yemen are in the midst of a very serious political and humanitarian catastrophe. As we heard from our briefers today, the situation in this country remains dire. In Hodeida, there is uh, still a fragile ceasefire regime, but uh, what is uh, giving a source of uh, concern, serious concern today, is intensified fighting in the south of the country. We call upon all of the uh, parties to the military confrontation in Aden to resolve their confrontations through ne negotiations, uh, a growing tension makes it uh, very difficult to have a dialogue with all political forces in the country on the basis of balance, take into account all of their concerns, and only helps terrorist groups. We are in support of the mediation efforts deployed by Mr. Griffiths, where he is trying to uh, make parties to the conflict understand that there is no military solution to the conflict, that there needs to be a comprehensive ceasefire and confidence-building measures. And in this regard, we welcome uh, the uh, meeting on the 7th of September within the Redeployment Coordination Committee. And we expect that the negotiations and looking for compromise solutions will help move us forward in implementing the Stockholm Agreements. The further deployment of the United Nations missions in support of the Hudaytah Agreement and the withdrawal of the military forces from the ports of Hudaytah, Salif, and Ras Isa will help de-escalation throughout the country, but will also help us unlock other aspects of the Stockholm Agreements, including prisoner exchange and de-escalation in Thais, and will also help move forward towards a discussion of the framework parameters of the settlement. The humanitarian situation in Yemen, as we heard from Marka, continues worsening and is increasingly reminding us of a fully-fledged humanitarian disaster. Humanitarian assistance to Yemen needs to be one of the priority areas of our work. Once again, let me underscore humanitarian assistance, which comes into the Republic of Yemen from outside, needs to be provided to the entire population of the country, regardless of who controls a given chunk of the territory. We are seriously concerned by the drone strikes on the 14th of September against major oil facilities in Saudi Arabia. We strongly condemn strikes against uh, non-military targets and destroying social and economic inf infrastructure. Armed escalation can read to make it further difficult finding a political solution to the conflict and can also potentially become a large-scale regional confrontation. We call upon all of the parties to exercise restraint and make sure that such uh, dangerous incidents do not happen again. At the same time, we would like to recommend that people do not hurry with the conclusions about who the perpetrator of the attack is. So this destabilizes the situation which is already tense in Yemen as well as in the region of the Near East as a whole. In conclusion, I would like to yet once again recall uh, uh, for us the resolution 598. It requests the Secretary General, together with the regional states, to develop a security and uh, confidence building measures architecture in the region. In this context, what is becoming increasingly topical is the already known Russian notion of collective security in the Persian Gulf area. It is aimed specifically at unblocking conflict situations and developing measures of uh, um, confidence and control. Once again, we call upon all of the interested parties to study this document and become involved in collective work aimed at finding mutually acceptable solutions for regional problems. I resume my final